Hello, it's Bill Davis here from Chartered Markets. I'm trying something a little different tonight. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, it's Thursday, June 9th at uh, 9.17 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And hopefully you can see the screen, but um, I wanted to add our handle for our Facebook page. It's at Chartered Markets as well as uh, an email address in case anybody want to contact me. I have two email addresses you can see uh, here. And um, I didn't put the uh, the Facebook, I mean the uh, YouTube page on here, but um, we'll go ahead and uh, make sure that gets added later on. So today, or this morning, we actually talked about the NASDAQ 100 futures we gave it some ranges and we gave it we gave it kind of a hypothesis and if you think about last night's video we talked about the the major markets and the um, the sectors and how it looked like there was a lot of distribution taking place and we thought today that the the market was going to get hit we felt the uh, the um, hedge funds and the institutional money we're going to roll everything over today including oil and energy and our our thoughts from last night uh came to light today and that may be unfortunate for some people um i personally i'm short in in the oil sector uh, but uh there was just a lot of signs last night showing things weren't looking that great. You know, when we talked about the transports and then we talked about the semiconductors and how those, how the market complexion was setting up and how the weight of the evidence was looking, it just, it didn't look that great for uh, bullish opportunities as well as some of our posts on our Facebook page and our videos when we talk about the economics, we talk about the M2 money supply talk about the Federal Reserve balance sheet debt, talk about the housing market, which is showing significant signs of of a uh, collapse, not not a collapse to where housing is just no good anymore, but uh, a collapse to where somewhere down the road it's going to have to find a bottom. And the areas that are the hottest in the market are going to be the ones that get hit the hardest. Um, and you in our videos, we, we talk about CPI, which which comes out tomorrow. I think the CPI is going to be 1.6% interest, I mean, uh, increase. <clears throat> I have a post on Facebook, and I think I touched on it several times on the past couple of days on my videos. I think it's going to be a shock to the market. There's too many talking heads on TV and too many analysts and economists that, that keep saying inflation has peaked. Uh, that usually happens anytime there's a, a bullish move in the market. Everybody comes out and says the bottom's in, the market can't go any lower, buy the dips, the economy's strong, the consumer's strong. But uh, yeah, they're using reverse psychology, in my opinion. It's just getting people to buy when they probably have intentions of the, that they're selling. So again, we talk about all that in many videos already uh, recorded. And honestly, no matter what happens in the CPI tomorrow, even if we got a spike, even if it reversed and the, and the whole market went up tomorrow, it doesn't change the the forest. It doesn't change the primary complexion of the market. The market remains down. The market remains in trouble, uh, as well as the economy. So when we're looking at the CPI tomorrow, we're looking at individual stocks and individual sectors, remember that we're looking more at the trees than we are the forest. So don't get too hung up on uh, what happens with the CPI. The market's gonna react how the market reacts regardless of what that data looks like and regardless of how you interpret the data or what you think the stock market should do based on the results of that data. And a, a caveat to that, I think the White House is probably 
They might come out tomorrow before the CPI is released. I just had a feeling. And they're probably going to downplay their expectations or it, ensure that the White House expectations are somewhere uh, communicated in that CPI. And that may benefit um, or not the CPI numbers when uh, the headlines come out and the algorithms take place. So we'll see how, how the algorithms work, where the spikes are up and down. But I do expect um, some significant volatility tomorrow. And before we get into the charts, just want to touch base on a couple more notes here. I, some of these are regurgitated from other videos and posts, but got to make sure we, we keep this um, front and center because it's not being front and center in the media. No one's telling anybody the truth. Everybody's acting like there's not an issue. And there is. Um, you know, in several videos, I talk about central banks. You know, the printing of nonstop debt. When Biden took office, inflation was 1.4%. The Federal Reserve, the Treasury Secretary... Uh, we're all pleading to the American people all through 2021 how we had to raise the inflation. Um, they did a, a, a damn good job of it. And they act like they didn't know the inflation was going to happen, but they're the ones that are in charge of the inflation. They're the ones that are printing the money, flooding the economy with uh, just infinite amounts of, of uh, cash. Uh, all the executive orders with the oil, and I think there was 13 executive orders that were signed on January 20th about fracking the oil. I mean, you name it. Um, countless uh, printing of debt when we talk about infrastructure bills and the CARES Act and stimulus. And again, there's um, there's some pretty cool timelines that I have on the Facebook page. If you want to go there and scroll down and check them out, it gives you a good timeline on when these events happened and what what the uh, printing package was, how much it was, and it also uh, what the inflation rate was at that point in time. And the whole reason of doing this and going back and putting this research into a different kind of visuals and charts is to make sure that this narrative that everything that's happening is Russia and Putin's fault is false. Uh, we want to show, or at least I wanted to show that all the problems that we're facing have been building up and we have data to prove it up to 2022. And uh, the Russian Ukraine just exas exacerbated it a little bit uh, more. Um, when we talk about central banks, the, the other reason why we had this major issue is if you look at the Federal Reserve balance sheet, it, it's over $9 trillion. And uh, Jerome Powell, the, the Federal Reserve, you know, he, he's just been printing debt or um, inflating the uh, federal balance sheet now since 2018. He just got uh, reelected by Biden. And it it makes you kind of dumbfounded why we're leaving this person in in such a very strong position. He actually, in my opinion, has more power than the president uh, and Congress and everyone else. He's the one that controls the money flow. But when the pandemic happened in uh, 2020 all through 2021, the Federal Reserve is, has been just buying up assets and stocks and bonds in the stock market and just grossly inflated this the stock market that we have today, breaking record after record after record. And, you know, sooner or later, not only does the Federal Reserve balance sheet need to get trimmed down from $9 trillion, but a lot of this equity that was uh, being dumped into the financial markets, into the stocks, you know, that money has to, needs to find a, a home as well. And that home need, means it needs to come out of the market. So we're not anywhere near getting out of out of trouble. You know, matter of fact, we're just scratching the surface on the things that are that are down the pipeline. 
And this is setting up, and we talked about this in other videos, this is setting up for one of the largest um, reverse wealth effects in, in history. You have people, you ha not just people, but all Americans are being hit with the inflation, um, the rising oil and gas prices, the wage increases, but the inflation is counteracting that. So you're not really getting much of a, of a wage increase. You're just actually paying a little bit more in taxes. Uh, in, in multiple um, components. And people that own homes, you know, they were buying homes when the market was was grossly inflated. They were buying houses that were up 30, 40 percent uh, from where they should be with, with normal inflation. Uh, people were fixing up their homes and the commodities, the lumber, the metal, steel, copper, you know, all those commodities were at record high prices. That's all these different constructions were taking place. And we're finally, I say finally, uh, it really depends on what side of the fence you're on. But um, in the housing market, we're seeing a lot of these cracks happening in the bubble, which, you know, we all knew this bubble was going to gonna happen sooner or later. And unfortunately, home equity loans... And in a lot of cases, they're going to be, um, they're going to owe more than what the house is worth when this reverse wealth effect takes place. And I don't know if people thought about that or even had any kind of notion that the economy is not as strong as they keep saying on television and the job market's not as strong as they keep saying either. And the president of the United States didn't create all these millions of jobs. If 30 million people, Let's say we have 100 million people that can't work for whatever reason because of COVID or offices closed, they can't work from home or whatever the case is, and then all of a sudden 40 million people are allowed to go back to work. The president and the White House is under the impression that, that they created those 40 million jobs. And that's just inaccurate. The, the economy is not strong. The economy was artificially inflate it just like the stock market with countless trillions of dollars being printed and funneled into the economy. It's not real. Just like um, Biden was saying that he cut poverty in half. And I, as, the, as soon as I heard that news in 2021, it made me choke because you can't throw money at the problem. Money is not the problem. There's other ways to help bring poverty levels up but you're not you're probably not going to hear that anymore he was touting it for quite some time but i've always been under the impression that poverty is going to going to uh, quadruple of where it was before they started throwing money at the issue because sooner or later the money runs out and sooner or later with all these um, high prices that everyone's paying there's not going to be much money left Um, so basically what I'm trying to say is that the easy money is gone. You know, the easy money of throwing money into the stock market or buying a house and letting it sit there for, for 10 or 15 years. I think all that easy money is gone. And I think there's going to be some, a lot of turbulence. I think it's going to last a lot longer than what people anticipate. I think these are going to be headwinds for, uh, the, uh, White House administration, well through uh, Biden's election term, if he lasts that long, or whoever takes who, whoever is his predecessor of taking his place, uh, again, you know, it's 40-year record high credit card debt. You have um, the lowest levels of household savings. You have a labor market where they, you know, they say there's more jobs than there are. Um, people, and the problem with that is, you know, going all the way back to the stimulus, some people were making more money than they made before. I talked about all this in the, in the 6 a.m. video this morning, if I'm not mistaken. If it, if it wasn't that video, it was the one that I did last night. All right, so those are my talking points. Let's go ahead and uh, look at some charts here. And we'll start off with the NASDAQ 100. Hopefully, 
that's uh, very visible. You can see and hear me, and everything is clear. So this morning, well, let's just crop this down a little bit, and you'll see the 600-day moving average. We talked about this this morning. We've been talking about this for quite some time, and we've been uh, reviewing this chart and mocking it up as we go. And the reason why I always focus on the NASDAQ 100 futures is just because it's your heaviest weighted. It's your it's your Apples, it's your Meta, which is Facebook, but they changed the ticker symbol to M-E-T-A. Um, it's your Amazons, it's your Teslas, it's your mega, super mega caps. And they had the highest um, weighted allocation within this sector. So when this, when the NASDAQ 100 moves, it can move the entire market. You know, there's like, there's hundreds and hundreds of ETFs that are connected to these very large mega caps like i think apple has 243 different etfs that are attached to it so when when this particular index moves it can move everything with it so this is why i focus mostly on this and they're the highest uh, stocks of liquidity so this morning we talked about this blue line at 6 a.m we said, you know, this could this could uh, provide some trading opportunities if it broke out of one of these levels. And we said that if it breaks out of the level to to the upside, we threw some words of caution out there that it could break out, but then turn back in and start trading back within this range. And we also threw caution to this 600-day moving average. Uh, because it has been working quite well at uh, maintaining uh, price resistance. And what this means is it's the past 600 trading days. And then uh, you add them up, you divide it by 600, and you get your moving average, which is uh, sitting at 12,744. And as you can see, it went up this morning. It almost got to that level close enough. Uh, broke below our range, even blew through our June 2nd low, which we kept talking about, um, saying that, you know, that was definitely going to be a target of ours. It's very impressive. So we'll go ahead and delete these lines now since they're irrelevant at this moment. But we will leave this. Um, did I just delete that? Sorry. What day was that? June 7th. So we broke through the June 2nd and the June 7th. Let's go ahead and add this. That's what... That's what confused me. I was like, where the heck did that go? So we'll leave these two lows on here, the 7th and the 2nd. And we'll get rid of the other lines. They're irrelevant at this point, since we have these lows as resistant levels. Uh, we talked about our demand zones as well. Uh, all week since um, I think it was since May May yeah May 29th and um, on our Facebook page we have we have a post that's pinned but I'll probably remove that pin and put the CPI post up there as the pinned post but we did several videos and posts about the bears are coming and we posted that on May 29th which is a Sunday uh, after the fact that the that the bulls, you know, had a really big run uh, for the past two days prior to me making that that video over the weekend. So what's going to happen in this demand zone? Now this demand zone would represent an area where, if I was working back at Citibank or working um, back at J.P. Morgan Chase, you know, these are areas that I would propose to management or or to a portfolio or whatever I'm managing this is where I would be placing open orders so orders that are actually sitting here you know it's not somebody that's that's chasing price so I'd have a bunch of open orders here for uh, potential buys but the problem is if the supply is greater than the demand 
then this area is not going to be um, it's not going to be as strong as one would think. You might get something like this, where it breaks down, pops up, breaks down, pops up. So you just get this this sideways kind of chop. So I'm not saying that that's going to happen, um, but again, the CPI number is coming out tomorrow, and I think if we get a if we get this shock to the market, which I think we can get. We might be able to test down to the near or at this demand zone to tomorrow. Um, that would be a pretty significant drop, but it's definitely not out of the cards. At the same time, we could get a pop tomorrow. And if we did, I'd be looking at this June 7th and June 7th lows as first levels of resistance. And if things really got worse, then they'd be retesting my May 20th low. Let's save that. Let's look at um, ExxonMobil. I am short ExxonMobil. I've been shorting ExxonMobil. This is one that I have some time on it, so it wasn't like I was chasing it. I was buying it at this level. So I was buying large blocks, large block trades, but then I was also um, scaling in. As price continued to go up, I was scaling in to kind of lower my cost average basis. I anticipated this to roll over. I just didn't, I did not anticipate it to have another update like it did so uh, the good thing is i'm profitable in this position right now and i decided to leave that position open because i i uh, um my forecast is there's more downside for the oil even though uh there's there's a lot of crisis around it and and uh inflation and prices and things of that nature now if you look at the daily chart of this and take these averages off I've been kind of stalking this all day, just watching it. Um, these yellow lines represent it just like we looked at on the NASDAQ 100 stock, or NASDAQ 100 futures. I was just looking at this real body candle here, and I just put lines for the, uh, the open and the close, because I wanted to get an idea of what the market sentiment and behavior was going to be for this particular stock. And once it broke below these levels you know, it gave me the confidence that that i was just going to hold on to this stock uh, into tomorrow and then if we did a grandler view into this and we take these extended hours off so here's where the market closed yesterday on wednesday today the market uh, this particular stock gapped down so it opened down from the close and we did this let's see where is this at we did these s curve patterns which are great now some people might say oh wow we made a higher high but you didn't really make a higher high because you never made a higher low so that would be for me that would that would be debunked that would not be uh, a valid um interpretation of this particular market movement and you might get somebody that you might get someone else that looks at this and say well i'm i think this is a head and shoulders pattern and and they drew and they draw the line so everyone has a different type of perception and interpretation of the markets so you just have to uh, utilize what works for you and stick with it but yes, I am, I am uh, somewhat heavily short, let's put it that way, on ExxonMobil. And if you turn the extended hours back on, you'll see that um, in the aftermarket, it's just consolidating sideways. But uh, 
I anticipate this to get down towards this 101 to 100 level. That would be pretty sweet. Um, this would be a trade that I'd be looking to close tomorrow. So, um, like I said, I got plenty of time. You know, I got a bandwidth of like 45 days, but um, I got a nice sizable profit today. But based on how tomorrow acts, I might close it. You know, I could hold it for even longer, but again, there's a there's a uh, good amount of profit on the position, and you know, when the market gives you opportunities to take profits, uh, it doesn't give you them. It doesn't give you those opportunities too many times to say, hey, do you want this profit or you don't? But we'll see how the market goes. We'll see how the price action is, and see how the um, overall market behavior. Uh, reacts tomorrow and tonight with the uh, futures segueing into the futures of the oil this is your Brent crude oil let me make sure that is the right let me look up a different chart 122.6 yep so we've been stalking this chart for quite some time you know, even up to its run to 137. Yep. And the other day it, it hit this uh, March 24th high. And we were saying that if it breaks this level and starts going to like a consolidation period where it starts basing and it starts making higher highs, then we were anticipating that it would reach this 137. But it looks like right now it's just taking a pause. So this right here is is nothing more than just like consolidation, right? And if you wanted to throw your moving averages on here, whoops, got the brush on still. If you wanted to throw your moving averages on here, you know, some would say if it's riding this 10 day uh, simple moving average, so a lot of people would be anticipating for this price to come down and retest this dynamic 10-day moving average, which would put it right in line at that 120 area, or this, 18, this 118, 119 area. So I'll be watching this all night. Um, I watch the futures pretty much all night. Until about one one o'clock in the morning or so, and then uh, you know sometimes at night I'll I'll peek at the phone around three o'clock in the morning to see how the uh, Europe market, the UK market opened uh, in the futures to see what kind of um, liquidity and price action takes place, and then usually about seven o'clock in the morning things really start picking up again, and then obviously when you have your economic numbers. Uh, leading into the 8.30 in the morning, 8 o'clock starts to get pretty rambunctious and uh, things really start to heat up into the 9 o'clock in the morning hour as the market's getting ready. The uh, NYSE is getting ready to open at 9.30 in the morning. We did a post with, with a lot of these today, you know, U.S. oil running hot. natural gas it's been a pretty big concern for me i've been posting about this i don't hear anyone talking about it at all which is a little bit alarming um, there's facebook posts and videos on this as well and then our rbo gasoline which is a i'm sure a contributor to the gas prices and i, I did a post earlier i'm not sure if, if people seen it or not but uh based on all the action today i, I can see gas prices going up at least up to about 20 per, uh 20 cents from today or yesterday's prices so if, if you look at the gas pump if you haven't looked at it lately you might look at the gas pump today and say wow it's 15 or 20 cents higher than where it was yesterday so just food for thought Um, I also want to show where the Facebook, I mean, where the uh, YouTube page is. So here's our YouTube page. 
It's YouTube.com. Um, actually, it's right here. BSDVS is is the handle for this. Eventually, I want to get it changed, but that's what we have right now. Uh, it's Chartered Markets. Um, we you know we have our videos here. So. Lots of videos, lots of great content. So I encourage people to please check them out. Uh, here's the one we did at, uh, this was the one we did at six in the morning where we were talking about watch the 600 day moving average, previous days, real bodies. So uh, the videos, I try to keep the videos down as much as I can, but unfortunately I just get rambling and and there we go. Um, here's our Facebook. Again, the handle is at Charter Markets. Here's the post I was talking about earlier when we were saying that the bears were coming from May 29th. And you can see, you can scroll down and you can see a bunch of posts of what's happening. Here's all the charts that we just talked about. Market updates. Uh, you know, this is the job claims report that came out today, uh, the inflation chart. And one thing I want to show you while, while I'm in here, now here's some other charts that I put together to show that this isn't all just Russia and Putin. So please check them out. Um, I just want to find that one. Again, this is all this is all great material. I just don't want to make this video super long. Here's the video where I was um, or the post I was talking about where you know Biden's inauguration. We talk about the different proposed budget um, bills, printing debt packages, and it shows the inflation rate. So it goes like this: down, over to the right, up to the right, down to the right, and it shows how inflation has been climbing well before this Russia invasion of Ukraine. And then obviously, you know, we got the blame game narrative since March. Um, okay, go back to the bottom screens here. Um, let's see, other than that, let me go back to just this view and we look at some of the other charts on some of the other screens just give you some highlights and then we can end this video uh, looking at the broader market of the futures again it looks like the uh, the gasoline is one of the only bullish areas in the futures market right now um, looking at the sectors Just a continuation of yesterday, of what we talked about last night, where everything looked like it was in distribution and we expected everything to roll over. Nothing looks pretty today. Uh, the VIX did climb up a little bit today into the close, probably because the CPI numbers are coming out tomorrow. So there's going to be a very large amount of volatility uh, hitting the market tomorrow. Uh, looking at the bigger picture for the uh, futures. Nothing good. Um, now I'm looking at the major indexes and nothing good at all. Yesterday we were talking about the um, the transports, you know, breaking down $555 to the downside, but it was at 600 And today it took another slacking of 288 So that's like, that's like 800 points in two days for the transports, which is very uh, concerning. And think about everything that goes into the transports. S&P 500 today down 97. Semiconductors down 81. We were we were mentioning yesterday if, if the semiconductors get hit, it's going to hurt tech. And if tech gets hit, it's going to bring everything else down with it. And when I say tech, I'm speaking about the Nasdaq 100, which is down 345 today. And something else that's noticeable 
is the indexes, the sectors, um, and the futures. They all close down at the lows. So that's that's not a very positive uh, tone. I don't see anything else to look at at the moment. Um, actually, I do. I do want to see one thing. Again, in the Facebook feed, I have – there's somewhere there's a post where I have a bunch of ticker symbols and I have a bunch of charts with some downside targets. I, I don't want to look for that because I'm trying – I don't want to just – I don't want to make this video like an hour long, but it, it's probably already there. I have no idea. I don't know if I see a timer. Actually, it's 35 minutes. So I, let me try to, try to get through this. Um, let me again share the screen. Like here's the chart of Apple. Again, you can see the supply zones. Uh, hopefully, you know what those are by now. Um, our downward pressure targets. So when this price ran into our supply zone, this this would have been an area where we would have been taking profits if we were bullish and setting up new positions if we were bearish. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that I had on my list. Let's just go through. Let me just go through this list real quick. See if we see any. Uh, Boeing. You know, heading down towards our target. I think Chinese stocks are going to get rocked. They were doing great, but uh, you know, if if the um, Nasdaq 100 and the semiconductors getting hit, I think the uh, this they're going to come after the um, China ADRs. Banks, I've been saying for quite some time, stay away from them. I think there's going to be a credit crisis coming. I have videos on that as well. Um, I know I had some more charts mocked up. Looks like Disney finally closed the gaps on the daily chart. It's not one that I'm following. Uh, I have a consolidation period here on FedEx because this was a stock that I was looking at potentially getting into, but I wanted to be patient and see what happens within this this uh, consolidation period. And you can see that price is breaking below the consolidation period. So what I anticipate if we get this further breakdown, especially in transports, that it's going to head towards this gap. So that would be, that would be my area, 206, 205 for a gap fill. Um, I know I have a chart on Microsoft and Tesla. Microsoft had some pretty good short um, opportunities in this stock uh, this week. Um, I anticipate again these lows to get hit. This uh, June second, I'm looking at this March 24th, and I have targets all the way down here to the 242 to 230. Tesla's one that I've really been wanting to short. I just been I've been tied up with other things, and I didn't get a chance to jump in there. But you can see the supply zones. You see our targets. We have four targets listed for Tesla as well as a gap, all the way down to 433 to 412. But I want to. I don't want to lose focus on these other targets that I have identified. I don't think we did Walmart. Walmart's just been beat to death. Target's been beat to death. Those are not ones that I'm looking at. I don't care how far they fell. Until price action and, and the market sentiment and the and the complexion of the of the market um, improves, I won't be touching retail stocks. At least not those two. Twitter, staying away from it. Exxon Mobil, like I said, we're in it. We got a heavy short position in this stock. Um. Coin, Coinbase had some news out today. Stay away from, stay away from all these coins. Stay away from Bitcoin. Stay away from the crypto. Stay away from all of it. That's that's my opinion, of course. But if it was me, I would stay away from it all. I've been telling everyone since December fifth to stay away from Bitcoin. If you got it, I I dump it. Um, you know, I have videos about Bitcoin, but uh, I see a lot more downside. A significant more downside for Bitcoin. Um, when I say significant, down to about my 
my 20,000 area target where I think there will be a significant amount of margin calls, which would eventually drop it down to 10,000. Now I need to pull this up real quick so I can just see what other. I don't want this video being so long. Okay, here it is. Let me share. So here it is on June 5th. I posted this at 1244 p.m. And you'll see the different charts. And here's... Or here's the ticker symbols and here's the charts at that particular time. You can you know, feel free to, to compare these charts with any chart you want to look up. And then this link, uh, if you click on this, it takes, us, takes you to the uh, YouTube page for Chartered Markets. Uh, Microsoft, Facebook. Facebook's now meta. They got beat the hell today. I've been an outstanding short to capture right into our daggone zones too. Mm, Airbnb, I have a chart on that. There's no annotations though. All right. So I guess that's it for looking at the charts you know we went over the we went over a lot of material and this uh, video is getting to be 41 minutes long so I'm gonna go ahead and, and cut this short I do want to end this video with a please um, you know like and subscribe and going back to here you know uh, again our handle for Facebook is at chartered markets and if you wanted to contact me via email, my contact information is on here as well. You can use either email address. The Gmail is probably going to be the best one for me to get it sooner rather than later. But whatever one you prefer. And when I say like and subscribe, if you could like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and the Facebook, that'd be great. Uh, that way... We, that way you can be informed of any time that I have some new posts that I put up and gives us a chance to continue to interact and uh, give me new ideas and new stocks to look at and watch and mock up and um, give you my different perspectives on that on particular stocks based on how the holistic market looks from a forest perspective as well. Other than that, uh, thanks again for your time. I know there's uh, a, a lot of things that other people can be doing uh, rather than spending 20, 30, 40 minutes watching a video. I uh, hope this was inf informational. hope the content was worth uh, your time. And again, thanks again for, for tuning in and um, look forward to doing some more. Thanks again. Take care.